Happy Friday, everyone. Today is Friday. When you are watching this video, like I said, I made all these videos at once over the weekend, but I'm only giving to you day by day. So we are saying today is Friday, and today we are reading two chapters. So we're going to do chapter four and chapter five. So I will start on chapter four, which is right here, and it's called Spades and Shovels. Let me set this phone up a little bit better. All right, so spades and shovels, let's see. Can we, Granny? Elizabeth Ann asked. Paul and Jimmy watched her hopefully. Why anyone would wanna spend his summer running around after something that isn't there is beyond me. Jimmy drooped, oh, Granny. Just think, Paul pleaded, what an adventure this could be, buried treasure, and what if we find it? Granny sighed, I can see you've got treasure hunting fever, and sometimes it's best to let, its run, let it run its course. Hear them, see that they have a good equipment, and I don't want them hurting themselves. Thanks, Gran. The thanks came from all three, and an extra hug thrown in from Elizabeth Ann. Then they disappeared towards the storage shed before Granny could change her mind. Hear them, Granny said sternly, I'm holding you responsible for these children. Yes, some hear him said, I'll see they come to no harm. She watched as he hurried around the corner of the house, then she took the gem inside to clean it up. Armed with shovels and spades, hear him and the children went down to the beach. Blocky scampered ahead of them. Let's see. Which way do we go, hear him? Jimmy asked eagerly. Granddad said Peg Lake's tracks went this way, hear him answered. He led the way along the beach. After that, who knows? I think we should try up on the dunes, Paul suggested. Maybe he took it up there. Elizabeth Ann objected. It's too hot up there. Let's stay down on the beach by the water. I bet there's a cave out on the point, Jimmy said. He turned back the other way. I'm going to find it. There's no cave there, Paul said. There never has been. Well, how do you know, Jimmy said. Whoa, boys, here him interrupted. Paul is right, Jimmy. There are no caves along this stretch of the beach. That's why we always thought the treasure was buried in the sand. I think Paul probably had the right idea. Let's head for the road. Elizabeth Ann groaned, but she followed the old man and the boys. They picked their way through the sliding sand until they reached the upper road. Here, shell and rock were mixed with the packed sand to make the going easier. Why don't we just stay on the road, Elizabeth Ann said. Well, that wouldn't do any good, Paul replied. This road has been worked on over the years, and anything that has been hidden here would have been found already. That's right, Hiram stopped, Hiram said, and then he stopped to look for Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, he called, come down from there. Jimmy had chased Blackie up to the top of the dunes. Blackie ran ahead of him and disappeared over the ridge. But Blackie went over there, Jimmy called. Let him go. He'll come back when he's ready. That's part of his regular route. Regular route, Jimmy said. Other dogs have backyards as their territory. The beach is Blackie's. He makes his run every day, down past the amusement park to the river and then back to the point. That's his territory. Well, then that's where the jewels are, Jimmy said. What? Elizabeth Ann said with a puzzled look. He's right, Hiram said. Blackie brought the ball, you see. Blackie got the ball in his territory. So where do we start digging, Paul said excitedly. Hiram scratched his head. I just don't know. Granddad covered the beach pretty well, and I've done some digging myself, so I know where it isn't. Maybe we've been a little hasty about the digging. Maybe we ought to go back to the house and draw out a map of Blackie's territories. We could mark it, mark it off in quadrants and search them one by one. Hydrants, Jimmy said. No, quadrants, Paul explained. They're sort of like squares. Then we'll do one square at a time. Good idea, Paul, Hiram agreed. I have graph paper and pens at my place. They started back to the garage. Jimmy followed, but he kept looking back for Blackie. The dog was nowhere to be seen. He gave up and clattered up the stairs after the others. He stopped at the open door of Hiram's apartment. Like his brother and sister, he had never been into Hiram's apartment. Granny had insisted that Hiram have one place where he would not be disturbed. Jimmy looked about in awe. A brisk breeze from the ocean fanned the curtains at the big windows. Bookshelves lined the walls under the windows and they were stuffed with books. Books were stacks on end tables, on counters, and on the dining room table. 
Maps lined the walls, and from the ceiling hung shells, perfect shells. On one side of the room was a huge salt water tank. Jimmy made a line straight for it. He forgot all about the treasure as he hung over the tank. Hermit crabs scuttled along the bottom. A sea anemone swayed lazily in the water. Coral made hiding places for angelfish and sunfish. Jimmy was poking at a snail when Elizabeth Ann called to him. She and Paul were bending over the maps that Hiram had spread across the table. Look, Jimmy, she said, this is Pelican Cove. Hiram made dots at the points that he thought marked the boundaries of Blackie's territory. Then he connected the dots. Jimmy laughed to himself, dot to dot. He, Hiram divided the area into four parts. Now we have it. You understand that this is just guesswork, don't you? Blackie might go further than this. Well, I sure hope not, Paul said. This is a lot to cover. Well, let's get to it, Jimmy said. I want to find a red jewel. I can then give it to Mom for her birthday. Besides, I need to find Blackie. He was out the door and down the steps before Hiram could fold up the map. Elizabeth Ann yelled for him to wait, and then she threw up her hands. We'll catch up with them, Hiram said. We can see them all the way down at the beach. They started searching the first quadrant. Hiram made them promise not to disturb anything. Put it back the way you found it. People got sort of put out at Granddad's holes across the beach. Put out, Jimmy then asked from behind them. They got mad, Paul said. He shoveled sand faster. I don't think that's a problem. This hole keeps filling up just as fast as I can make it. Yes, Elizabeth Ann agreed, and she quit shoveling. Didn't pirates mark the spot or something? Good idea, Hiram said. What would make a good landmark? Remember, it has to have been around for a long time. The palms in quadrant one, Paul suggested. They make a funny pattern. Or the rocky ledge over there by the road in quadrant three, Elizabeth Ann said. You know, Hiram said thoughtfully, your granny may have a few ideas of herself. She was born right here at Land's End, and she'll know what changes have been made over the years. Maybe even better than I do. Yeah, and she still has that picture of lemonade, Jimmy said. Last one up is a rotten egg. He dropped a spade and ran. When the others reached the front porch, Jimmy was coming back outside. I can't find her, he said. What? Elizabeth Ann stopped, gasping for breath. But breath, Granny's gone, Jimmy said. And so is the emerald. Dun, dun, dun. So Granny is now missing, and so is Jimmy's jewel. Where do we think it went? So for chapter four, you're going to do two workbook pages. Also for chapter four, let me double check. Um, so chapter four, sorry, I'm checking the lesson plans behind me, is X marks the spot. So it says, where did Blackie find the jewel? Imagine and draw the path that he might have taken around Pelican Cove and place an X where you think the treasure might be buried. So we know he found it close to the amusement park. So where, do, which way do you think he would have gone? Okay, it's not a right or wrong answer because this is you imagining what we're gonna find out later on in the story. And then you can color the map. All right, so then let's continue with chapter five. So chapter five is called Treasure Fever. So let's see if we find out where Granny went. Where could she be, Elizabeth Ann asked. It's not like Gran to leave without saying a word to us. Now hold on, Hiram said. She probably went to the grocery store to pick something up she needed for supper. She wouldn't want to come all the way down to the beach just to tell us that. Not if she's coming right back. The pickup's gone, Paul called. Hiram's probably right. She must have gone to the store. No one wanted to leave the porch. They sat down and waited, waiting and watching the road up to the house. At last, they heard the roar of the pickup truck. It's Gran! Elizabeth Ann took off running, but Jimmy beat her to the pickup truck. Granny, where have you been? He demanded. Down at the museum, talking to Mr. Culpepper. Ooh, a new character. Hiram groaned, not Mr. Culpepper. Old busybody Culpepper, Granny frowned slightly at his tone. She pulled off her gloves and took the pin out of her straw hat. Mr. Culpepper is the curator of the museum, you know. You just can't pick up gems from the beach and walk away with them. You can't, Hiram said. No, Granny added, but there is a finder's fee and a good one. Then we can still look for the treasure, Jimmy persisted. If that's what you want, Granny replied, but I have to warn you. 
Hiram is right about Mr. Culpepper. By noon tomorrow, you'll have all the help you need. What do you mean, Elizabeth Ann asked. Cyrus Culpepper is not known for keeping secrets. Tomorrow, everybody in town will know about the emerald Jimmy found, and everybody will want to help you find the rest of the treasure. They can't. Jimmy's eyebrows came together in a dark frown. We found it first. We sure did, Elizabeth Ann said, annoyed at the thought. Why should they get in on it? Gran was quiet for a minute. Then she said, you found the emerald, and if there are really any more jewels, whoever finds them will get a finder's fee, just as you did for the emerald. Well, then let's get going, Paul said. Maybe we can find the rest of it before it gets dark. They went back to work, even Elizabeth Ann shoveled with all her might. And Jimmy left Blackie to play along while he dug with his spade. By supper time, all they had were tired muscles and big appetites. They ate everything on their plates and asked for more. Granny bustled about the kitchen. Guess this nonsense has some good in it, she said cheerfully. Growing children need good food. After devotions, all three children were ready for bed. Granny shooed them upstairs before dark and no one protested. The next morning, Jimmy was the first one up. He stumbled to the rib window. Rubbing his sleepy eyes, he started to call for back Blackie, but the shout stuck in his throat. The beach was full of holes. They made a jagged line down to the beach. Jimmy blinked. When he opened his eyes, the holes were still there. And there were people farther down the beach. People with shovels. Paul, Jimmy called. He shook his brother. Wake up. There are people down there. People? What people? He rolled over and went back to sleep. And Jimmy shook him again. Treasure hunters. Paul was on his feet before Jimmy finished. He stuck his head out the window. Oh no, he moaned. Jimmy, go get Elizabeth Ann. All three children were dressed and out the door before Granny could call them for breakfast. Arms folded, she stood on the porch and watched them go. She shook her, then she shook out her apron and went back inside. Hiram was already on the beach and Blackie frisked around him. He wanted to play, but no one was interested. Not even Jimmy. The beach was filled with working people. That must be Mr. Culpepper over there, Paul said. I guess you were right, Hiram. Yep, Hiram said. He tossed out another shovel of sand and wiped his brow. And there is Miss Abbott from the library. Elizabeth turned around and a thin woman trotted through the sand toward them. Dark glasses covered her eyes and a large straw hat shaded her from the sun. Hello there, she called. Isn't this wonderful? A pirate on our beach? Why, Hiram, all these years we thought... She stopped and put her hand over her th onto her throat or her mouth. That my granddad had lost his marbles, granddad finished for her. We didn't find any marbles. We found a clay ball, Jimmy said. Paul turned to explain to Jimmy what they meant, but Jimmy was already chasing Blackie down the beach. Well, in any ca case, Miss Abbott said kindly, we were certainly wrong, weren't we? Appears so, Hiram said, looking at the crowd growing on the beach. Jimmy came racing back with Blackie. Hey, he called. Someone's got a bulldozer over there. That's definitely a way to dig up the beach. A bulldozer? Hear him drop his shovel. Jimmy, go tell your granny to call the mayor. I have to put a stop to this. Granny and Mayor Tidwell arrived about half an hour later. They found Hiram facing down a large, beefy-looking man. They were standing in front of his bulldozer. The man had his hands on his hips. He looked hot and angry. Jimmy ran to Granny. Better hurry, Granny. Hiram's getting awful mad. Granny smiled. It looks like he has company. Company? I mean, both of them look angry, Granny explained. Oh, said Jimmy. He and Blackie followed them to the crowd that had gathered around the bulldozer. Hold on, said the mayor. What's going on here? He shook his head at the clamor of explanations. One at a time. You go first, Hiram. Hiram explained as quickly as he could. The onlookers murmured at the excitement as he told about the clay ball. I heard it was washed up by the storm, shouted one digger, and that hundreds were laying on the beach just waiting for someone to pick them up. I heard that the boy found another gold, uh, found a whole chest of gold coins called another digger, and that at least two more chests were buried under the sand, said a man with a beard. So where are they? Move out of my way, said the large man. I'll unearth any chests hidden here in a matter of minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't be hasty, Jake, 
the mayor said. He frowned at the crown. Or any of you. You could wreck this coastline before the day's out. Well, then what'll we do? shouted a woman from the crowd. We'll wait, the mayor said firmly. This beach is now off limits to everybody, and I mean everybody. For how long? The man's tone had turned ugly. Long enough for you to get the treasure for yourself? The beach will be patrolled by the volunteer police department until we decide what to do, the mayor replied. He turned to the crown. Town meeting tonight in City Hall. Be there. The people began to pick up their gear. A man made his way through the crowd to the bulldozer. We have a quick job, Jake, he called. The storm washed out part of the beach near the amusement park, tumbled down that old refreshment stand. They'll give us a flat 100 just for finishing the job. Not now, Jake growled. I'm parking this dozer up on the road where I can see what's going on here. But I said it'll wait, Jake said. Jimmy watched as the man hurried back up the path to the road. The bulldozer roared up behind him. Jimmy parked, sorry, Jake parked it where he had a good view of the beach. Wow, Blackie, Jimmy whispered. He rubbed the dog's head. I think we'll stay out of his way. Right, boy? Blackie looked up at Jimmy and barked. Jake doesn't sound like the nicest of guys right now, does he? So that is it for our first week of the story. We've read chapters one through five. Today, now you're finishing chapter five's worksheet, which is called Filling in the Holes. And you have three options underneath each question as to which one goes into which blank. So if you need to rewind the video and get to the chapter five part to answer these questions, you may. Um, because there's nothing wrong with rewinding it in this one. This isn't a test or anything. It's just workbook pages, okay? So I hope you guys are enjoying the story. And next week we will continue with chapter six, okay? Have a wonderful rest of your Friday. Bye.